Yeah. What's your obsession with what streets? Because you you have an obsession. Oh, just a little bit. Um, I just love the way the wet street brings the colour of the, the, the lights and down onto the street on what otherwise would be just a grey piece of tarmac. So, uh, yeah, I think I probably am a little bit obsessed. So it's those reflections that you're after. Yeah, yeah, it just brings the sky down to the street. Like, let's take a look over here, look at this. Okay, so check this out. Check out the colours on this sidewalk here, on this street. This is what it's all about. drawing? Well it's a bit of both isn't it really. You start off essentially drawing with a brush and then you gradually start to block in small areas. And the purpose here is really just to preserve some of the outlines of your pencil sketch. Yeah that those pencil marks are really light and they, they would very quickly disappear once you start throwing quantities of paint on the canvas. And just to point out this is acrylic paint. Yeah my normal process is to do the underpainting with acrylics and then finish in oils. But you could do the underpainting in oil. Absolutely, yeah. It just takes a little bit longer to dry, that's all. Hitting the dark areas first. Mm -hmm. The paint is still quite dilute at this point, and it's probably going to take me a couple of layers to get the deep darks that I'm looking for. But without building up any body or texture yet. That's right. You still want to be able to see the weave of the canvas at this point. So this is the completed underpainting. Yes, generally working in oils, you want to start, you want to try to work from dark to light if at all possible. So once the underpainting is done, you should have all your darks in place. It's all sweetness and light from here on in. Sky. Any particular reason? It's best to start now with the light area and the sky will often set the tone for the rest of the painting. Back painting around telegraph poles and street lights. Would it not be easier to just paint the sky and then paint these on top? Well partly this is just in keeping with the light over dark rule but I also think it just looks better when they're carved out like this. There are practical limits, of course. You don't want the painting to look finicky. Mm -hmm, for sure. Yeah. For small shapes, it will make more sense to break that rule and paint the dark over the light. Here's what we spoke of earlier, the wet pavement reflecting the street lights and the sky. And you will note that there's generous amount of the underpainting still being left to show through and that creates form and texture.
What's the biggest challenge you find people have with this sort of motif? I think the key is to switch off the left side of your brain. That's the part of your brain that's dissecting and analyzing. And that part of your brain is what sees the concrete and the asphalt and the water and the reflections. And it's very hard to translate these ideas into paint on canvas. Turn off that side of your brain and try to simply see abstract shapes, tones and colors. That makes the process way easier. If you are working from a photograph, Try turning the photo and the canvas upside down and paint that way. That almost forces your left brain to give up trying to analyze and leaves your right brain to get on with it. Yeah, and that process really works. And you'll very likely be pleasantly surprised when you finally do flip the canvas right way up. We're obsessive ladies with umbrellas, right? Well, wet streets, umbrellas, like, what do you expect? So, so, so why no rubber boots? What, you mean like wellingtons? Wellies? <laughs> Wellington. Okay, fine. Wellington. Wellies. Wellies, because they're ugly, that's why. Right? Mm.